Hello and welcome to another episode of Autogafuel. Today with me AJ and Jonas. Today we are here in Mannheim and that's special for two reasons. First of all, as you can see behind me, I'm at the University of Mannheim, my alma mater. And secondly, Carl Benz invented the car as we know today right here in this city. So a special place for a special occasion because today we have with us the all new Volvo S60. A mid-size sedan which unfortunately hasn't been very popular for Volvo. That's primarily because it has fierce competition from rivals like the Mercedes C-Class, BMW 3 Series and the Audi A4. But now with its new design and technology, can it really compete? Well, let's find out. The S60 is now in lines with the current generation of Volvos in terms of design philosophy. And if you guys remember, back when I drove the Volvo V90 cross country, I said that the design was very professorial and I couldn't have said it better because right here in my university, it does look very professorial. And what I mean by that is it's polite, but intelligent and sophisticated. So up front, first of all, the width is something that you will notice. This car is 1.85 meters wide, but instantly recognizable as a Volvo. So things like the Thor Hammer LED daytime running light and the front grille with the vertical slats make it instantly recognizable as a Volvo. There are some interesting details like chrome accents along the bottom of the bumper and of course Volvo logo taking center stage right here in the middle of the grille. There are different design packages which with some very subtle design changes. For example, this is the inscription, so it's a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more upmarket feeling, but you also have a sporty version like the R design. This car is 4.76 meters long. In fact, it's 10 centimeters longer in terms of the wheelbase than the predecessor. And what that means is, well, right here, you get a lot more backseat room. And we'll check that out later on once I'm sitting inside. But I think the proportions of this car are really nice compared to its bigger brother, the S6, S90. Um, this has a good mid-size sedan silhouette, which I think uh, really suits this kind of, a, again, professorial design that this Volvo has. It comes as standard with 18-inch wheels, like the ones you see here, which I think fill up the wheel arches really well. You can optionally get 19-inch wheels if you would like. From the front to the back, there aren't too many design lines, just one line going all the way from the back here, disappearing, becoming very soft towards the middle of the rear door and kind of just a few curves and haunches along the side overall. The roof line is also really smooth, tapers away quite gently, it's not very abrupt and there's enough boot hang, uh, overhang right here at the back to again make the proportions of this car really nice. What do you guys think? So the T8 PHEV, the plug-in hybrid vehicle, has the charging port right behind the front left wheel and the usual petrol filling cap just behind the rear right wheel. Here at the back of the car, I do like how these taillights have this cool crescent C-shaped design. Again, similar to the other Volvo sedans, but here, because of the way the proportions are, it seems a lot more sharper and I really do like it that way. S60 badging here. Volvo stamped in broad letters on the top of the bumper uh, of the bootlet and a plethora of badges here on the right side as well. T8 denoting the engine. We'll talk a little bit more about the engines uh, in, in some time. But we also have the inscription which denotes the trim line that this car has and twin engine because this is the hybrid, the plug-in hybrid and all-wheel drive 
clean design in the bottom with some parking sensors, a reversing camera up here, chrome strip along the bottom of the bumper, and we do have two large exhaust tips. Yes, the outside casing is cosmetic, but inside there are actual exhaust pipes. So I think we see this quite often, and it's at least better than having a purely cosmetic exhaust tip. Here we have the key fob, very typical Volvo, nothing new to report, but you have some buttons, for example, to release the tailgate, so it's quite useful. It is keyless entry, so if the car is locked, as it is now, I just have to come up to it, put my hand inside the door handle, the door will unlock, the mirror will extend, and I can open the door. The door opens really nice and wide. The materials are really good, top-notch, very soft and plush on the top. Down here as well, lots of soft touch materials, padded armrest, and even the door uh, pockets are padded, which is <laughs> fantastic. Even expensive cars have hard plastic here, and this is soft touch, so Volvo interiors are really good. Although, I must mention, if you look inside, everything is just black. And Volvo has some really nice bright colors for the interiors, even the steering wheel with some nice accents and a lot of wood. And I personally would not go for this full black treatment. It kind of makes it really dark and a little bit more um, hemmed in. Um, nevertheless, these seats are really comfortable. We'll talk more about them once we get inside. A lot of adjustments, as you can see down here, for lumbar support, extending the base, um, all kinds of uh, uh, adjustments with memory. So really useful. And lastly, Again, on the speakers here, you see this has the Bowers and Wilkins, uh, which Volvos have usually, and they are cracking systems. An interesting little detail you'll see is the Swedish flag on the seat, which is kind of interesting because, first of all, yes, Volvo is a Swedish brand, but it's owned by a Chinese company, and this S60 is actually manufactured in the US. But overall, the seats are really interesting. Some interesting design, like in the head restraint, nice patterns. There's a lot of different options, so check it out. And again, pick a lighter color uh, to make the cabin feel more spacious. Sitting inside, there is enough headroom, even with this panoramic glass roof, for somebody of my size. I'm five foot eight or 1.7 meters. So the inside of the S60 is very familiar. It's very familiar to, uh, similar to all the other Volvos uh, in the lineup and that's no bad thing. I think Volvos have some of the best interiors and it's just You know exudes class and comfort Again lighter colors would be my preference. You can also change the color of the wood You can have different kind of maybe piano black plastic I always like the wood you have some more chocolate mocha colored woods that you can use um, and this nice dash of Aluminium along the center of the dash really makes this nice. I also like the large rectangular air conditioning vents with these really cool aviator style kind of um, fins. Nice knurled finish along the edges to turn off and on the vents and very easy to operate and control. Of course, what takes center stage is this nine inch touchscreen, but we'll come to that in a minute. First, Jonas, let's focus uh, on the dashboard and the steering wheel. You can get the optional steering wheel with steering mounted controls. You can even get a sport steering wheel which has two spokes here in the bottom. But uh, these don't have paddle shifters as you can see. I also like the design of these buttons because there's just one kind of dual element, one, one piece on either side and you don't have so many different buttons and rollers and, and touch pads. So very elegant which I always appreciate with Volvo. A nice circular line in the middle of the steering wheel itself. Of course, being a Volvo, we have virtual uh, instruments. So you can see the speedometer on the left and a tachometer on the right. You have, of course, the hybrid mode. So it shows you how much of battery power you have left and how many kilometers still empty. So right now we have about 34 kilometers left with the battery alone. 
The navigation also, you can have the map in the middle, but there's a lot of different options you can see down here in terms of the trip computer for your average speed and average mileage that you're getting. You can control your media, your phone, and the navigation as well right here in these menus. This car also has a host of different driver assistance systems which you can operate down here. For example, you can set the distance the car should maintain with the car in the front. You have different options, for example, um, the pilot assist, which is kind of like a smart driving assist, which controls the radar controlled adaptive cruise control along with the lane keeping assist. Really interesting and we'll test this out once we're driving, but you can also just have adaptive cruise control or a speed limiter. So these options can be controlled with this over here. There is also a head-up display which gives you navigation instructions. It also has a uh, traffic sign recognition system so you can see the speed limit and if you're going over the speed limit it will just start flashing ever so slightly to give you a little bit of a notification that hey you're going too fast slow down. So that being said let's look here back over to the 9 inch touchscreen. A lot of useful uh, controls on the system but you know, again, we've known this for quite some time. This is pretty much controlling everything, including your air conditioning. So there are very few buttons in the bottom. If you press the main button, you can see you're in the home screen. So you can have some of the important things that are easily available. These tiles, like for example, you can have your navigation over here. There's a <laughs> you can have your navigation in so many places here on the dashboard and on the head up display. So there's no way you can <laughs> lose your way. But of course you have you know things like your phone um, and uh, data oh, sorry uh, radio you can connect your phone with apple carplay android auto so a lot of options and if you just swipe left now you have some uh, car functions so of course you can have things like your uh, driver assistance systems lane keeping assist park assist cross traffic alert you also have distance alert you can change the head-up display blind spot monitoring, road sign information, a host of different kinds of things, um, collision avoidance. You can even adjust the passenger seat uh, here if you would like to. If we go to the right, now you have some applications. This Bauer and Wilkins system sounds really great and you have the ability to kind of um, change the setup and the tuning with some presets like you can have it with the hall effect, concert hall effect, and so on and so forth, it sounds really nice. Um, apart from that, you also have some uh, things like, for example, you can connect it to a lot of apps because this is a connected car. You have Spotify already built in, and of course, some you know parking, um, Yelp, and all these other kinds of applications are over here. So really useful, very easy, kind of like your phone. You can slide down from the top to reach some settings you know that you want to use. For example, setting up some of the uh, systems in the car, all these settings can be controlled right here. To get to the um, climate control, you have to tap one of the lower icons or uh, buttons here. So if you tap this, now I can set the temperature, I can synchronize the temperature. Here I can set, you know, the vent speed, so the fan speed, which vents to use, if I want the defogger, and so on and so forth. I can also set the parking climate so that you know, when I enter the car, I can have it preconditioned. There's heat, seat heaters, steering wheel heating. So a lot of different uh, things that you can have to make it more comfortable. You can also see when you're adjusting the seat, you also get the options right away, right here in terms of cushion extension, passenger seat, uh, sorry, uh, lumbar support and uh, the base and things like that. Finally, down here, we have some hotkey buttons. So you have the volume knob, again, nice knurled finish. I really like that. Uh, defoggers, skip track, hazard lights, some basic functions you do have here. Let's take a look down here. First thing that it grabs your attention is this beautiful crystal uh, gear shift lever, which looks really nice. And at night with all the ambient lighting that you can have in this car, there's LED strips all over the dashboard. Uh, all of this will glow and you can set different colors and it looks really nice at night, a great place to be. Again, if you have a nicer interior color, it just feels like a lounge, it's really gorgeous. The piano black here, um, really nice. Again, a little switch here to start-stop the engine, you know, which is again something that we see 
quite often with Volvos. And you also have different driving modes. So Jonas, if you look up here, right now we're in hybrid for everyday use. There's a pure eco drive, a constant all wheel drive version and a power mode for sporty driving. <laughs> and we will test this out later on. We'll go up into the hills near Odenwald and see how powerful and sporty this mode really makes this car. 303 horsepower, that is not shabby at all. Electronic parking brake, auto hold, some cup holders. And down here in the center armrest, there is some place to keep your phone, a 12 volt power socket, a USB port, but I don't see a inductive charging port. Hmm, interesting. There's also a nice expansive panoramic sunroof, which brings in a lot of light into the cabin. You can also open the glass about 70% uh, of it actually. And again, now it kind of opens up the cabin, lets the outside in and feels really nice. Let's take a look in the back. Again, with this longer wheelbase that the car has now compared to its predecessor, we have a larger door for the rear, which makes getting uh, car seats into the back that much easier. Although the opening is not, you know, substantially huge, it is large enough, but um, yeah, of course, not an SUV. The door is also really nice. Materials in the back are as good as the materials in the front. Even down here, we have soft touch plastic and everywhere else is also plush materials. Let's get inside. There's a handle here for me to hold as I make my way inside. Again, have to watch your head a little bit, but once you're inside, wow, there's plenty of knee room. Again, that longer wheelbase really liberates a lot of space here in the cabin. It's a little bit more like a theater style seating. So the front seats are a little bit lower than the rear seats. So you're sitting a little bit higher than them and it gives you good visibility outwards. Compared to, I think the three series, you know, these rear windows are a little bit larger. So it doesn't feel that dark inside. Although with this black color everywhere, it does, you know, make things not as nice as it could be. I have good visibility around the headrest uh, uh, from the front seat as well. There are vents for me on the B pillar, which is really interesting. There are no vents in the center console. So a nice way of doing this. Speaking of the center console over here, let's take a closer look. So even the rear seats have heating for the outside two seats, a 12 volt power socket, but a huge transmission tunnel. I mean, this is ginormous. It goes right through the center. It's wide, it's really tall. And while the seats are pretty comfortable, you know, you can see that I don't have too, too much under thigh support. My knees are a little bit upright. This seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight or 1.7 meters. And sitting behind myself, I have a lot of leg space. Even here with Jonas's seating position, there is enough room, but my knees are a little bit upright. The seat itself is nice and comfortable. That panoramic roof also helps uh, uh, you know, give me good visibility. There are isofix points for the outside two seats with these hinges, which I always prefer rather than these pop-out covers, which if you have a pop-out cover, you're inevitably going to lose those. So I like this, but the truth is this does really seem uh, like a strict two-seater. Sitting in the middle, well, the seat base is not so bad. The back is also not too stiff, but I really have to battle with my co-passengers for uh, leg space or uh, for foot space. So three adults sitting back here might not be the most comfortable. But on the plus side, you have a center armrest. So if you're only traveling with two adults, you have some nice, uh, uh, have a nice tray here, a place to put away some items and a couple cup holders. All right, let's take a look inside the boot or the trunk. The tailgate lifts quite smoothly. In fact, you have a key release on the uh, remote. Um, so with the T8, because it's a plug-in hybrid, first off, you can see that there's quite a lot of space that we lose out here in the back. Therefore, the luggage space is about 392 liters. But if you have the T4 or the T5, there's a little bit more room in the bottom and you get 442 liters. So it is a very rectangular usable area, some nice little mesh pockets here to stow away some looser items, a 12 volt power socket. There's also a couple switches here in the back, unfortunately not in the trunk and only on this side 
but you can use these switches to tumble the seats in a 60 and 40 fashion, therefore liberating a very long, flat loading area to haul longer items. All engines are 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder engines. For the S60, there is no diesel option, just petrol and plug-in hybrid electric. All are coupled with an 8-speed auto. There is the T4 with 190 PS or metric horsepower and front-wheel drive, a T5 with 250 horsepower and front-wheel drive, and a T6 with 310 horsepower and all-wheel drive. This is supercharged and turbocharged. The all-wheel drive is an on-demand coupling-based system. Today, we're driving the T8. The T8 plug-in hybrid has a supercharger along with the turbo. Volvo adds up the 303 horsepower from the combustion engine and the 87 horsepower from the electric motor for a total of 390 horsepower. The all-wheel drive here has no mechanical link or prop shaft. Instead, the electric motor powers the rear wheels and the IC engine powers the front. The 11.6 kilowatt hour battery sits in the transmission tunnel. It does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.6 seconds, even though the T8 weighs around 2,050 kilograms. The power figures vary a bit from market to market due to regulations. I'm in Mannheim, really familiar territory for me, <laughs> lived here for several years. So let's start off driving in the city to understand how the new S60 fares. First of all, because this is a hybrid, I'm going to go into the driving mode and go into hybrid mode. Now, of course, when you're driving at city speeds, when you're driving slowly, it runs on full electric power. With just the electric power, you can go for up to 58 kilometers, um, which is pretty good for, you know, just a simple daily city commute to your office that could even be enough for a full round trip so that way you can use this car as an electric car on a daily basis to get to work and of course if you really put the foot down and you hammer the throttle then it switches very seamlessly uh, into the petrol mode um, visibility is also not too bad yes it does feel a little bit hemmed in and the windshield is not so large but you know, I have good visibility out the sides and I have pretty good visibility thanks to this large rear view mirror out the back. In the hybrid normal mode, the uh, steering is also quite light, which is really ideal for driving here in the city to make quick turns. So let's wait for the light to turn green and let's put my, let's put the foot down a little bit. Because of that electric motor, you get instant torque to push you straight through which is really nice especially out in cities where you have to make quick little uh, you know darts in and out of traffic it's really nice and useful steering like I said is really lightweight and the electric motor is so quiet you can barely hear anything overall the sound insulation is also really fantastic in this car so you know you don't really have to be uh, you don't have to you're not worried about being distracted by the loud traffic outside of you of course when you come to a complete stop the stop the engine would shut off if it's not running in hybrid mode but since it is just in electric mode right now you know the motor shuts off automatically the seats are also fairly comfortable you have a lot of adjustments um, you know you can raise your seat up a little bit if you want to have a better look out over the hood but I find that sitting lower in this car makes it feel a little bit more spacious because if you go uh, put the seat higher, then your view gets a little bit obstructed by the top of the uh, windshield, which is you know covered here by the roof. The brakes are also really progressive, so very easy to use in the city on these bumpy streets. The suspension is also doing a good job of soaking up the undulations and the harshness and overall it's not too bad at all because it's not as long as the s90 this car is also fairly maneuverable when you want to make u-turns or uh, you know park in tight spaces the top down 360 degree camera the backing backup camera the parking sensors all of these systems really assist you uh, in, in tight city spaces the steering rack is also 
you know it's not too quick but it's not too slow either so it's a good medium which again means when you're making turns in the city and gridlock it's also doesn't require too much effort uh, in your hands to keep you know turning the wheel back and forth the car also has a lot of assistant features uh, and systems like you know emergency braking lane keeping assist the pilot assist which is the volvo's way of combining lane keeping assist with the ad adaptive cruise control and we'll test that out once we get out onto the highway so here in the city these relatively compact dimensions this fairly good visibility and this electric motor uh, is a really great combination making the s60 a really good city car put your foot down and the car just accelerates so easily so making overtakes on the highway is really a breeze plus let's test out now the um, pilot assist so I can activate this with the button on the steering wheel and now I can set the speed to the limit which is 120 kilometers per hour the car is going to maintain a safe distance with the car in front it's also going to maintain the lane for me and intervene with steering if I'm straying out of the lane. See, now there's a car in front, so this car will automatically start braking and will maintain a safe distance. I can also change the distance that I wanted to maintain with the car in front uh, with the buttons over here. And of course, when I want to change lanes, it will deactivate the steering uh, intervention. The Noise is a little bit more now on the highway, you can hear a little bit more of the tire noise, but on the whole, I think this car is a very quiet cabin to be in, especially the engine, even when the engine is running and you're not driving in just the electric mode, the engine is not that loud. We'll test it once we put it in dynamic mode and really put the foot, put my foot down um, on the twisty roads because I know these Two liter engines that Volvo makes and yes they're very sophisticated some of them have even won awards but they've never really felt that smooth they're not they don't have that buttery smooth feeling they're always a little bit coarse and a little bit gruff so we'll see if this engine is the same or if it's better in some way so it's very easy for me to change the speeds now that I'm getting into some contra flow. Let's test how this steering assist recognizes the difference between white and yellow li uh, lanes. Mm, nope, <laughs> I didn't really grab that. I had to intervene on my own. So the pilot assist is something that you can just use as a backup. You should never rely on it completely. Of course, it's not designed to be, you know, an autonomous vehicle. It's just there as a as a as a backup, as an assistance. But yeah the seats are also you know provide good support you can change the amount of lumbar support that you want the suspension also aids this car doesn't have the sports suspension that the r design have has so you, do, you don't get that lowered sports suspension which honestly i think is okay because for this car i think a more supple more comfortable ride is something that just suits its personality a lot more but apart from that, you know, the navigation screen is also really easy to see over here. You get navigation commands on your um, heads up, head up display as well as on the virtual dashboard. So you have plenty of uh, you know, options to view the navigation instructions. And the steering wheel, you know, it doesn't, it gives you a lot more confidence at higher speeds. The weight increases ever so slightly. Let's just take a quick look at the uh, the mileage we're getting. We haven't been driving on the highway for too long, but already it says 3.7 liters for 100 kilometers, which is really good. Of course, it's a hybrid, so we can expect numbers even lower than this. You know, somewhere around three would actually be really good. So yes, you do have the best of both worlds because you get that 303 horsepower, that petrol engine to really give you a nice shove in the seat when you want to you know have some fun and accelerate and overtake cars but because of that electric motor in city you don't have to spend any fuel at all and remember electric motors work kind of in the opposite way than petrol motors so out on the highway this is where internal combustion engines 
are more at home. Revving at a constant speed for long periods of time is when uh, is where they're really efficient. Whereas electric motors start lose, losing that efficiency when they start um, you know, spooling at high speeds and uh, running at high speeds. They're better at start-stop city conditions at low speeds. So that's why hybrids are really a great combination. You have that electric motor, which is happier at in city and giving you great uh, mileage, um, you know, or rather doesn't need, you don't need to use the petrol engine at all. And for the highway, at high speeds, you do have that electric, uh, the, uh, the petrol engine to take over and it's happier at, uh, in, this, in this kind of a scenario. So yeah, I must say, on the highway, there is a little bit of road noise, but I think it's just because I feel that a lot more prominently because there is lack of other kinds of noise. The engine is really quiet. So I hear the tire and the wind noise a little bit more, but on the whole, it is a very, you know, a very refined cabin to be in. Spent some more time playing around with the assistance systems on the highway and on some winding roads and I realized that there's an other cool feature. It has a curve speed assist. So what this will do is when you have the pilot assist on, it will not only steer the car, you know, sometimes it has trouble catching the yellow lines, but with white lines, it's really good. And of course the adaptive cruise control, but it can also slow the car down when it's coming up to a curve. It will notice that in the navigation and then it will slow it down preemptively to help you get around easily. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. I'm just gonna stop here on the side a little bit to let the cars behind me pass. So now we have the opportunity to test out this car on some twisty mountain roads. So to do that, I'm gonna push the drive mode, this uh, scrolling thing over here, this roller, go into power, sporty driving mode. The electric motor is uh, just there to fill in the gaps uh, to keep me accelerating, really uh, to help aid the acceleration. And now the engine is gonna be in the forefront. So let's put our foot down. Wow, instantly that 303 horsepower. I can feel that nice shove. This has all wheel drive. So I could feel that there's a little bit of uh, wheel spin in the back, but on the whole, it was really, uh, had really good uh, traction off the line. That electric motor, in this case, in this mode, is used to provide that extra punch and fill in the gaps in the torque. Around this hairpin, body roll is not terrible. It's a little bit more noticeable. I do wish I had paddle shifters. I don't really want to use this, you know, it looks really fancy and glamorous. Maybe not to everybody's taste, this crystal care shift lever. And it definitely does not feel fun to use if you want to, you know, um, use it as a manual mode. So I would much rather just let it do its own thing. Wow, definitely. In terms of power, you're definitely not going to feel lacking. Body control is not too bad. Could have been a little bit better, but then again, this car weighs over 2,000 kilograms thanks to it being a hybrid. Whoa, <laughs> that all-wheel drive means that the rear does kind of become a little bit more lively, which is really great to see. Visibility is pretty good. The A-pillar does not really obstruct your view too much. Since this car is fairly compact, it's also nice to drive on narrower streets. You don't feel scared. It doesn't frighten you that you're gonna hit something on the side. So that way it's, uh, it's, a, it's just the right size. The steering is also a lot heavier now, gives pretty good feedback. Actually, wow, this four-wheel drive system really allows the car to rotate. Now that I'm kind of pushing it a little bit, I can feel the rear kind of trying to overtake the front. So there is that torque vectoring effect to slow down the inside front wheel and to speed up the outside rear wheel. And that gives this nice pointing, pointing and turning kind of rotation, um, which I was not really expecting. The steering feel is okay, it just feels heavier. It doesn't really give me too much feedback. Again, this is probably not going to, you know, it's not going to be more sportier than a 3 Series. But that being said, it definitely can hold its own. On this downhill turn, yeah, the weight, you do feel that a little bit. You feel that kind of pushing you 
into a little bit of an understeer because of that weight and front wheel bias but for just a nice fun little blast through the hills this is the road that I drive down quite often because it's really right behind my house I know these roads well so I feel much more confident in taking these at a little bit of a higher speed and I see that yes there's a little bit of understeer but it's it's not so bad and that electric motor providing extra thrust is definitely very useful the engine I can't hear it at all which is kind of good in a way you know this is not the Polestar engineered version and definitely not the, the actual out and out Polestar uh, version of this car hopefully we'll see one sometime in the future so that being said it's it's not uh, it's not a very loud sonorous sporty sounding engine it gets the job done most certainly there is very little turbo lag you know now over in the city again if I switch to hybrid everyday use you know automatically I'm going into my electric mode I can see on my dials how much battery power is left I can also see up to what RPM I can use just battery powered electric drive versus where the petrol engine will start to kick in and when it does kick in it's a very seamless transition you barely notice it starting up so I think this kind of a combination is really nice but let's get back into power mode since we're heading out of this little village I miss having paddle shifters again you know this is not going to replace your 3 series M Sport line or your S line in your A4 so definitely this isn't you know you know especially in this inscription trim that power is nice to have but the other things that come that need to be there to have that sporty driving is not there perhaps in the R design it will be a little bit better but here in the inscription not so much but definitely 303 horsepower electric boost <laughs> performance wise it's definitely good for a compact or rather mid-size executive luxury sedan yeah so definitely if I can see this you know you have a nice efficient electric drive in the city a nice comfortable cruising on the highway with its assistance systems and pilot assist all these advanced driver assistant functions and when you get to stretch its legs out on some nice twisty roads not too bad even in this dynamic mode on these bumpy streets you know the suspension is definitely more on the compliance side it's still absorbing these shocks and undulations much better so yeah feels pretty good I must say let's take a right turn shall we let's go up this road this is a nicer road tight turns plenty of grip no squealing from the tires at all dives in really well that all-wheel drive really helps keep the back end lively it feels a little bit like it's dancing it feels like it's on its toes which is great let's overtake this bicyclist electric thrust from the electric motor coupled with that engine so this is my kind of hybrid drive you know in the city it's great for saving saving money and uh, being kinder to polar bears but when you really want to have fun it's 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 Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde these hybrid systems that's what I really like about them that they can be you know polite to the environment and at the same time really thrill you when you want it to so a good combination overall let's take a quick peek now at the mileage now it's gone up to 5.3 liters for 100 kilometers before I started driving up this hill I did see numbers around 3.2 so like I mentioned three is a really good overall figure if you're gonna drive you know predominantly at slow speeds in the city the electric motor runs that you know not necessarily just at low speeds it runs even up to like we were driving it up to 70 kilometers per hour it was completely still in electric drive so it's not uh, it's definitely a lot more usable but um, now of course it's a little bit higher it's 5.5 so still in really good territory but perhaps a little bit too high for a hybrid which is expected if I'm running it in dynamic mode and only using the petrol so 
my verdict, if you want to have a nice, sophisticated, luxury Volvo, then the S60 is a great package. It's compact enough to be quite suitable in the city and that electric drive, the hybrid mode and the electric uh, mode definitely is great for that. It's quite comfortable on the highway. Rear seat space is pretty good, so you can use it as a family car to go on long holidays. Trunk space is pretty good. Unfortunately, with the uh, with this T8 hybrid, you lose a little bit of trunk space, but it's not terrible. And out on the highway, it's definitely, sorry, out on these mountain roads, it's fun. Perhaps you should get the R design with the 15 millimeter lower suspension, because then you probably will have a little bit better body control than this car does and the suspension will be a little bit more sporty so then it'll be probably more apt for driving for fun but if you're only looking for something which is you know going to be more fun to drive is this better than a 3 series with that parameter only i don't think so Let's summarize today's episode of the all-new Volvo S60, with prices starting at around 43,200 euros for the base R design with no options. It does seem pretty interesting and a good value proposition, but the test car that we have here in the inscription trim with all the optional extras is easily over 74,000 euros. So the question we had in the beginning of the video, is this enough to steer customers away from its well-established German rivals like the 3 Series, C-Class and A4? For that price, it's hard to say it could because it's not undercutting its competition in any way. But at the same time, it doesn't have to because it has its own really good value proposition. It's a very luxurious car, full of technology, looks really grand, is very comfortable. And with this T8 engine variant, you have 303 horsepower and a plug-in hybrid. So that means in the city at slow speeds, you can run fully on electric power, being kinder to the environment, and also not making a dent in your pocket. But when you want to have that fun, when you want that overtaking power, switch it to the electric mode into the petrol mode, and then you really feel that punch. Yes, it's not sporty. If you want a sporty sedan, you're better off with a 3 Series or a Jaguar XE, but this still can hold its own with those kind of cars as well. Coupled with its all-wheel drive system, there's plenty of traction in the snow, in the dirt, so you can have that confidence as well. And the truth is, you don't have to buy this car outright and pay 74,000 euros for this. Volvo in most markets has a subscription-based leasing model, so you just pay a monthly fee and you can have the car. So in that way, why not? It seems like a pretty interesting proposition, but is it enough for you guys to change, choose this over its German rivals? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I also want to give a shout out to the University of Mannheim for letting me film on the campus. It was great to be back. And as always, Jonas and I are signing off. We'll see you guys next time.